Hello and welcome to the Do-It-Yourselfer's Guide on how to work with a coping saw. In this video, we're going to be talking about this tool right here. This is the coping saw. We're going to be talking about what this is, how do we work with it, and how can we be safe with it. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, the first thing we want to talk about in this video is what is a coping saw? A coping saw is a hand saw which is designed for making very intricate controlled cuts. We are, with a very thin blade that it has, able to make very sharp turns in the wood, make curves, make circles, and it's so versatile that, you know, this is a tool that you really want to get to know. So, that, with that design, there are a few things that allow the coping saw to accomplish the behavior that we want. Uh, the first thing and the most important thing is the very thin blade here. We have this blade which is tensioned in between arms of this frame here, this metal frame that we see. And this thin blade can be removed from the blade, inserted into a drill hole or whatever, and it can be used to make turns. So if it were a thick, you know, thick saw blade, you wouldn't be able to turn. But since this is so thin, it can actually make room for itself to turn in its, in its sawing. So you can start sawing and then actually make a rounded, rounded turn. It's not very good at going directly 90 degrees, but it still can be done. Another versatile element of it as well, where you can actually change the blade angle and then you can cut straight and you can also cut on the side. We have uh, one vocabulary word that we want to share with you today, which is teeth per inch, TPI abbreviated. With this idea of teeth per inch, we can kind of know what we're buying when it comes to a coping saw blade. So this is, I think, around a 10 tooth per inch blade. And this is a kind of, this is a low TPI for a coping saw. The kind of main things behind TPI that you would want to know is that low teeth per inch, and you'd see this on like a, you know, something you'd use to cut down a, a tree, I think a hacksaw, you would see a lower tooth per inch, and that would give you a very rough cut. You would be breaking wood fibers and maybe causing splinters, whereas the high TPI, like the coping saw, gives you a very smooth cut. You're less likely to really mess up that wood with that cut. The high TPI, when you also go very high, allows you to cut with a more abrasive way hard materials like rock or like metal. If you were to buy a 32 TPI, 32 teeth per inch coping saw blade, then you would be able to cut metal. So it's exciting to know that there are options for that when you choose a coping saw that it can cut metal, but we're going to only stick to cutting wood today and, and use the techniques for that as we only have the 10 TPI blade, all we need for the projects I'll be doing on this channel. Alright, so the next part of the video that we want to get into is how do you work with a coping saw? So there's a few things that you need to know if you own a coping saw and two of those things are you need to be able to change the blade and you need to know how to rotate the blade. And this allows us to get into some of the main functionality of the coping saw is that there are these two tabs here. This one at the top and this one at the bottom of the blade. These things are fixed to the blade and allow, and if you rotate them, it allows rotation of the blade. So what we're going to want to do to rotate the blade is to unscrew the handle a little bit. and this, So this frame is actually screwed into this handle by a bolt. And so by unscrewing the handle a little bit, we're loosening this. And pretty much all we have to do is rotate these tabs. So I rotated the top tab. The blade is actually twisting. So we want to make sure that these tabs are lined up when we, when we rotate them. And so we have rotated them about 90 degrees and we can see that the blade is about 90 degree rotated. So now we can cut this way and as instead of straight on. So you can see now this is, this is a proper, proper twist. We have the tabs aligned and thus we're able to not twist our blade up when we're bending it. So now that you know how to bend the blade, that allows us to lead into how do you remove the blade and replace it and the first thing we want to do is realize that the there is that bolt there and we can untwist this handle. So it's only currently being held by tension. So by if we rotate it counterclockwise, then we are able to lower the tension on the blade. 
you can see that this is getting this this is this tab is getting closer to this end of the frame, and thus the blade is reducing in tension. So there's going to be a point at which the handle starts to get loose, and this is a point where you can take out the blade. And all it takes is just simply a pull. And I'm going to loosen it a little bit further. So yeah, just pull it out. When you look at the blade and when you replace your coping saw blade you're going to notice that there's these pegs on the blade and these are what you catch this is how you catch on the on the tabs of the coping saw you're going to insert this into the groove that they have on the coping saw like this and we're going to actually use the bottom of the coping saw and so now we have that and put in there we can match it up on the top and make sure, make sure that the blade is, is pointing down. The blades, if they are pointed upwards, then you're going to have to, you're going to cut with a pushing motion and that puts a lot of force on the blade. So the way that they designed the coping saw is so that the blades are facing down and you're going to cut the, you're going to cut the wood on a pull stroke as opposed to a push. So getting the bottom in there, we now slide in the top and we are pretty much locked. So it's still very loose, but now we can start rotating this handle uh, clockwise. And we're now tensioning the blade again. Putting the blade in tension creates that lock. And we're gonna go all the way until it's tight. And so there we go, that's the blade re, re uh, so there we go, that's the blade put in again, and just to double check it, uh, we know that it's tensioned because it, you can strum it like a guitar. And so that's how you replace the blade, and that's how you rotate the blade. Alright, so in this next part of the video, I want to show you some basic cutting technique with a coping saw, and I thought it would be better to do this by example. The first thing we want to do is demonstrate cutting speed, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do that live for you. So we're going to demonstrate how to make your cut, and how to, how, what's the right speed to do it. Uh, if we want to, so we're going to mark a spot here, and this is a nice way to make sure that you're not going to lose your groove that you're in when you're cutting, is to just mark it with a few straight strokes, and these are push strokes so that you're not actually ripping much wood, and you're also, you have much less resistance there. So now you have your, your spot marked, you want to go and you want to apply a very small amount of force downward, but move the blade quickly. This is the quickest way to cut with a coping saw. And so this method of cutting is nice because you have a very low tooth per inch, or very high tooth per inch here, and we don't want to apply a lot of force because we'll rip the woods. So I also wanted to demonstrate the advantage of rotating the blade. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate our blade. You know, unscrew the handle, we're going to rotate ours 90 degrees and tighten the handle down again. So now that our blade is rotated 90 degrees, we can now make a cut down this wood and we don't, we're not going to be limited by the frame. So if I were to keep cutting down this way, the frame would eventually get stopped here and I would no longer be able to cut. But now that we're cutting 90 degrees, we have an indefinite way of cutting down this thickness of wood. So I'll go ahead and just show you guys. We're gonna mark our spot by a few push strokes. And now that we have our notch, let's start going. All right, and so, yeah, we've made a, a little chunk right there. Uh, I'm cutting poplar wood, by the way, so not the nicest quality stuff, but. And I also wanted to, talk, to point out, so this is my setup for clamping. You know, I, I should, I'm going to be publishing a clamping video later, but your clamp, you definitely want that wood clamps while you're, while you're using it. So after that little cutting demonstration, I want to mention a few things about safety using hand saws. And a lot of this stuff I want to mention goes to really any hand tool, but definitely it's most dangerous when you're working with a blade. So the first thing is we want to work on a stable surface. I have a bench that I purchased and it's great. It allows me to work in an elevated position and it really limits wobbling. And so when you're cutting and you're getting wobble, you have a higher chance of making that blade slip off. So make sure that you're cutting on, a, on that stable surface. 
And the worst thing you could do is cut in midair, holding a piece of wood or a piece of PVC and cutting with you know without any support. This is definitely dangerous, and you want to you want to limit doing that. Uh, we also want to clamp our material down. I use uh, I use clamps that are very versatile. I have four or five of them that I can clamp at multiple positions on the wood and limit any left and right up and down rotation when I'm when I'm cutting on my on my stable surface. So that's very good to clamp. The next thing we want to do is when we're cutting, we want to cut away from our hands. If we are going down the line and our hand is waiting there for that saw blade, there's a good chance that you could not be paying attention and you can cut right into your hand. So that is not something that we want to do and make sure that you're you're using your, your, you are thinking about where you're putting your hands, and you are keeping it out of the direction of your blade, and and also keep it out of the direction of possible slippage. If you're just starting that cut, it's possible you're going to slip. Make sure that your hand is is not in a position where it could get hurt. The next thing you want to do, and this is a big one because wood, when you cut things like wood or plastic, I mean, especially with a saw, you're going to produce a ton of dust. So. You want to have adequate ventilation in the room that you're doing. You want an open room and make sure that, that dust is getting kicked away from you. you. The best thing you can do here is get a, an exhausting fan. So you're actually pulling air out of where you're, you're, you're working and bringing it to something like a dust, dust collection system. So the last tip we want to mention is to clear your workspace beneath where you're cutting. When you're cutting off of your workbench and you're letting that wood just hang off the edge and you're letting it fall, that wood could potentially cause damage to something beneath it. So make sure that you have a clear space beneath where your wood is going to fall or even catch it so that you're not going to injure anything or damage any property. So with that, I think that's the end of the video and we covered a lot here. We covered what is a coping saw, we, co we covered how do you use it, and we co covered some safety tips along with that. So I hope that you learned something, and I will see you next time. We're going to be talking about another awesome piece of equipment. So thank you very much.